woman is nine months pregnant and still wears a super tight garter. She gets up at dawn every day, then tiptoe to the washroom to dress up. Kathleen did this only to maintain her perfect image in her husband's mind. But the varicose veins in her calves were getting worse. Kathleen could hardly walk. Sometimes the pain was so bad that she couldn't sleep. The nurse advised her to take off her tights or they would restrict her circulation. But Mustang likes a garter. He said I had the prettiest pins in popular. Now look at him. The kind nurse ordered a pair of stockings for her to protect her legs during pregnancy. But Kathleen thought they were too ugly. Not half as ugly as bandages, which is the alternative if you won't wear these. Kathleen continued to torture herself for beauty. Despite that vice, however, this day she accidentally twisted her foot. Her husband rushed to the hospital to help Kathleen to seek medical attention. It was then that she realized she regretted it. I should have worn the support stockings the midwife gave me. The doctor examined her ankle and said that high heels would do her more harm than good. The doctor ordered her to be hospitalized immediately. Kathleen needed to stay in the hospital for the rest of the day to prepare for the birth. What will my husband think? He won't find me attractive no more. I don't want him to see. The doctor didn't know what to say to such an irrational pregnant woman. When Kathleen was admitted to the hospital, she asked the nurse to leave her curling iron behind. She wanted to fix her hair before her husband came over. In fact, Kathleen's nervousness was due to her lack of confidence. She had developed stretch marks after her pregnancy. Her body was out of shape and her ankles were swollen. Kathleen even coughing so hard she peed her pants once. She was afraid her husband would dislike her for it. So Kathleen had to do everything she could to maintain her perfect image. But she soon learned it the hard way when she went into labor. She went into labor for three hours. But the baby still didn't move. Her husband paced nervously outside the operating room. The doctor came as soon as he learned of the situation. Her baby was too big and her bad habits had led to a fetal malposition. The doctor had to cut open the uterus to assist the birth. The, the sound of a scream made Stan walk with anxiety. It sounds like she's being torn limb from limb. I know you're worried, but it's all part of childbirth. You're telling me that's normal? It's the most natural thing that could be. Jesus wept. And after a long time, he finally waited for the baby's loud cries. Kathleen tenderly held the newborn baby and watched her husband's happy face. She was also very satisfied. But the next moment Kathleen began to worry again. I must look a fright. Hey, you look fine, love. You did brilliant. Although her husband comforted Kathleen, but he was frightened away by her postpartum discomfort. When he came back again, Kathleen had already put on her makeup. He tried to kiss his wife, but accidentally touched her wound. At this moment, Stan was feeling very remorseful. I just can't stand it, that's all, you know. I'll be back on my feet before you know it. I'll get my figure back, I promise. You'll have bed rest, like the midwife says. You let me take care of you for once. It turned out that Stan had learned that Kathleen had done a lot of stupid things for him. He felt guilty for his selfishness. I'll never let you down again, Kathleen. Not you, nor our daughter. Kathleen, until this moment, to understand that the relationship is not a deliberate pretense. It's the most honest way to express it. I haven't had a period. Since when? Ever. I've never had one. A woman never had a period until she was 22. She came to the hospital for a checkup and realized she was a man. Lois and her boyfriend are very much in love. They're already talking about getting married. But Lois was vaguely uncomfortable about the upcoming premarital checkup because she had never had a period before. She had managed to hide it from her mother and everyone around her since she was a little girl. Lois arrives at the hospital apprehensive. Instead, she was confronted by a dousing male doctors who gathered around to examine her body. The chief asked the other doctors if they found anything unusual. One of the doctors replied that she didn't have pubic hair. The director then asked them why this was the case. Lois had never been humiliated like this since she was born. However, after her consultation was over, the doctor told her an even more unacceptable truth. Not only did Lois have no uterus, she even had a male organ hidden inside her. Although Lois appeared to be a woman, but she was genetically a man, Lois was on the verge of collapse. Oh, oh. I don't have a word. How am I gonna have children? She thought about how many times her boyfriend had expressed his desire to be a father. Lois was devastated. Her intimacy with her boyfriend had become a little awkward at the moment. She felt guilty for not being able to give him a full family. But Lois did not have the courage to confess everything. She had to break up with him against her will and say, 
that she no longer loved him. He doesn't believe this fact. Lois can only cry and tell him to go to someone who can make him truly happy. Because she couldn't do it, Lois takes off her engagement ring. But her boyfriend didn't want to accept the sudden breakup. He waits outside Lois' house every day in silence for her to change her mind. But the more he does this, the more Lois is distraught. She cut the white wedding dress to pieces. She even went to the extreme of leaving the world. Luckily, her mother found her in time and took her to the hospital. Lois' life was saved by gastric lavage. When she woke up, Lois wished everything could go back to the way it was. But the reality was that everything had changed. The midwife said Lois was the same sweet, kind person she had always been. She had a family and a fiancé who loved her dearly. She says our bodies are just a part of us. Lois says she now wants to know herself better. Lois is also coming to terms with the fact that she is a man. She even wants to meet people who share her experience. She also found the courage to confess everything to her boyfriend. But his attitude hasn't changed a bit. Lois said that she would never have children if he was with her. He said he didn't marry Lois for the sake of children. He wanted to be with Lois because he always loved her. Sometimes love is the purest thing. Love doesn't have to be overly conditional. And it doesn't have to be about profit and loss. We just need to listen to our innermost voice. This mother was 10 months pregnant, but her baby was in her daughter's belly. Diane's mouth was gagged with a wreck while she was in labor. The mother wouldn't let her make a sound. The mother lied to others to save her face and let Diane give birth in secret at home. But it nearly killed Diane. Diane was abandoned by a scumbag a few months ago. He left her with nothing but the baby in her womb to save her reputation. Her mother had to tell the public that she was pregnant with her fifth child, thus to keep Diane's pregnancy under wraps. Mom is out selling fish, bending over to carry the goods. Diane was cashiering and counting. Passersby could not help but accuse Diane of not helping her mother with the heavy work. Diane felt anxious when her delivery day was approaching. She still wanted to hire a midwife to help, but her mother only wanted to keep this humiliating secret hidden forever. She didn't care about her daughter's helplessness. She even touched the pillow on her stomach afterwards. But that day at work, Diane's water broke. Mom, I hope I'm gonna wet myself. Press your legs together. Don't let anything come out in a rush. The next thing I knew, Mom was rushing home with Diane. She put her three boys to bed before it got dark and told them not to come out no matter what they heard. Then she put a stool against the door of the house. She put Diane in the bathtub and filled it with warm water. She kept cheering and reassuring Diane that both seemed to struggle with all their strength. Diane was tossed around for hours and finally gave birth to a baby boy. Diane was also exhausted by now. However, an hour later, Diane's placenta could not be expelled from her body. The mother panicked when she saw the unexpected situation. She called the doctor anonymously for help. According to the doctor's instructions, Diane was put back on the floor again. Then she yanked the placenta hard and pulled it. Nurses passing by heard the screaming and immediately went upstairs to check on her. Diane was already dying. After some examination, the nurses were shocked. It turns out that the mother's forceful tug, not only did she pull out Diane's placenta, but also Diane's uterus was pulled out with it. The mother felt nauseous. She couldn't believe what she had done. In the end, Diane was saved by the nurse's professional treatment. Diane was taken to the ambulance. The mother looked at her vibrant newborn baby and was overcome with remorse. She took the baby to Diane's bed and confessed. The I've already got three little brothers. He's your son. The mother realized that her stupidity had almost killed her daughter. So she decided to stop hiding the unspoken secret. She didn't care about the gossip. She wanted her daughter Diane to enjoy her right to be a mother. I'm a mom, mom. Whenever we are alone, our loved ones always give us the most strength and support.